Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled action pack and intellectually adi interesting edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T. from Weather Is, your colonel of confusion, your captain of catastrophe, your commander of chaos. This late-night edition of This Week in Weather for November 4th, the search for winter. A lot to talk about, so let's get right to it here. Some very interesting trends here going on. First, I do want to point out that the winter forecast will, will be released probably on Tuesday on the website and on the Facebook page, so look for that. Remind you that you can always, of course, get our latest information and forecast here from the, uh, this is the website, uh, relatively new, only created, uh, we did it, I think it was back at the beginning of the year, but you can see all the forecast products, uh, snow removal, what have you, different stuff like that, advanced notification of big events, and of course, the three-week newsletter. Anyway, so let's get right to it. Okay, so this here is the upper air pattern as of here uh, this this evening. On this, uh, it's actually now, well, so yeah, it just early, turned into early on the Friday morning. But, uh, so a couple things to talk about. First, you see the low pressure area down here. This is this big giant trough that stretches from Baffin Island through Quebec, Canada, down through the East Coast, and all the way down into the Western Gulf of Mexico. Now, there's some sort of system which is developing a separate piece of energy here. This is the trough which brought all the cold air. I mean, we, it was impressively cold this morning uh, in many places of the Mid-Atlantic region, I must say, and uh, a lot of places had a hard frost, and we'll probably get another one tonight. In fact, they even had snow in the mountains of western North Carolina, Mount Mitchell. Uh, this afternoon, in case you did not see that on social media, that's all the buzz there this, in the weather business, social media. Anywho, so we have that system there. Then we have our ridge here developing over the Rockies. There's our big blocking pattern still in northern central Canada. That is not going away. And here's an enormous Pacific trough, which continues to sit in the Gulf of Alaska, churning the waters here and making the northeastern Pacific quite cold with all the upwelling going on there. Now what happens is, this is what the models have been showing. Now back last week when the models first detected this thing, it looked like it was going to come warring up the east coast as a major nor'easter this weekend. Then, starting on Sunday and Monday, the models started taking the system off the coast. They still developed a big low pressure area out of it, but it was too far off the coast. Maybe clipping Cape Hatteras, the coastal areas of South Carolina, Georgia, but that was about it. And that's what the models were showing this morning. Now look at the date here in the upper left. That's from early um, Thursday morning. And you can see that the low has now moved. Uh, it has formed an upper low, uh, but it has moved uh, north, east northeast off the coast. And of course, uh, all the low pressure area and the rain is to the east of this area right here, where the blue arrow is right there. And that's um, uh, why you don't get any precipitation from it. And then notice this upstream piece of energy here, those black line is, that's what's known as an upstream kicker. And it kicks the system off the southeast coast out to sea. So that's why it doesn't do anything. So that's what the pattern, that's what, you know, that's what it's, the models have been showing. And you can see this here now, this was some early on Thursday morning. There's the low, it's pretty big, it's pretty impressive. But as you can see, it only impacts the eastern portion, eastern third, eastern 25% of North Carolina. And all the heavy rain is around Cape Hatteras, and it moves off the coast. Windy on the coast, but that's about it. This is the early morning European. Look at that. You can see the low. It does not doing much at all. As you can see, this is now valid for a Sunday morning. Now look at the 18Z European. Look at the difference. Let's look at that again. This morning, Thursday evening. Big difference, big, big difference. And the models are clearly trending this thing closer to the coast. And you can see this on the GFS. This was from a few days ago. This was from uh, early on Wednesday morning, the 00 run. You can see on the GFS again, taking it out to sea, just brushing the Carolina coast. Then it's bye bye, it's not a big deal. And then it goes out to sea. That's what the GFS was showing. So both, all the models are showing that. Now the new 18Z run, look at the difference here. So we compare this which is valid for early Saturday morning to that. And you can see that the system is much stronger, much closer to the coast. And um, also the energy coming in from the Pacific is much further to the west. You see that? It's back over Minnesota. Now the 18Z has this closed low coming up the coast over Cape Hatteras. This is very similar to the January 25, 2000 surprise snowstorm on the East Coast. 
very similar to that event. Of course, this is rain, and that was a huge snowstorm for the Carolinas and Virginia. But still, it's very similar to that sort of thing. And you can see this is the this is the uh, Thursday 12Z run, and you can see how much rain and wind is in north in the, east, the entire eastern half of North Carolina, the eastern third of Virginia, going into the Delmarva. This is a big system, and it's trending closer to the coast. So the entire forecast here is in trouble for our eastern Virginia. Uh, the Delmarva, Eastern Maryland, even southern New Jersey, if this continues to trend further to the coast. Now, once it gets up their way, eventually that piece of energy in the Great Lakes does kick it out to sea. It turns a sharp turn to the right and heads towards Bermuda. The 18Z, this is the 12Z, excuse me, the 12Z GFS is doing the same sort of thing. Much bigger system, much closer to the coast. You can see the big rains here in the eastern third of North Carolina and southeast Virginia. Meanwhile, you have strong high pressure in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. So this is going to produce a very sharp gradient in the rain field, in the precipitation in eastern uh, Virginia and central North Carolina. So, uh, you know, that's going to be very interesting to see here. Now, if we look at our teleconnections, the Arctic Oscillation, you look at the black line, it was slightly negative, now it's gone positive. And it's, when it stays positive, it begins to trend towards neutral as it go towards the middle of the month. Uh, the NAO, very close to neutral, not, not doing much there. Um, this here is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. This is your Alaskan Ridge, and when it's negative, you get cross uh, flow from Siberia, the North Pole, bringing in the real serious cold air into North America. And you can see right now it's positive, and then it trends towards uh, neutral by the time we get to the middle of November. And this here is the PNA. Right now there's a big ridge, a moderate ridge on the West Coast, and then it trends towards neutral by the middle of the month. All right, let's take a look at our other models here. So this is 144 hours out. This is Wednesday, uh, November 10th, and the Pacific Trough is ejecting a huge piece of energy into the Pacific Northwest and the Rockies. There's clearly some sort of low pressure here developing in Colorado right here. You can see that. We have our block over north central Canada, and this uh, moderate trough in the polar jet here, and the Arctic jet here, you can see this energy is going to be coming out and becoming a problem. We already have a ridge developing in the southeastern United States. So the operational European bombs the system out into this humongous storm. You can see that uh, deep close cut off low situated over Omaha. Very impressive. And then you can see the huge block to the north. You have a ridge on the west coast off of California, eastern Pacific, and another one in the western Atlantic. And this is a big system here and it would probably produce a significant snowstorm for somebody in the upper plains and then a lot of rain and severe weather in the delta and uh, the heart of the midwest but the european ensemble is not quite as aggressive notice it has a deep trough here but it's not a closed contoured monster bomb still that's a very impressive looking system for uh next this i guess on november 12th yeah a week from tomorrow now what this looks like here's the system on november 11th on the European, operational European. See the snow here in uh, southern Saskatchewan and the Dakotas and the big rains, Missouri, Iowa, getting into Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Arkansas. A system wraps up very intense according to the European. Remember the European had this big bomb. Remember we saw this. So that's what the surface map looks like here. And you know, now this shows a, a blizzard, really a November blizzard, uh, just pretty much in central Minnesota, uh, eastern portions of Nebraska and South Dakota. And then you have a big rain uh, and with strong thunderstorms with a cold front. A very big system here, if this is correct. But And then it wraps up, and you can see it pushes into the Great Lakes, heavy snow in western Ontario. Look at this front here. So in this sort of situation, you're going to get strong south winds here up the east coast, okay, driving the warm area and the humid area, and while this cold front is slamming eastward. And as a result, you get tremendous rains here along the east coast and thunderstorms if this is right on Saturday November 13th. It's probably overdone to some degree but look at the cold air, look at the north winds coming in behind the low, the monster low here. So very impressive. And the GFS is the same sort of thing. You can see that very heavy cold front, a lot of rain on the front, a lot of warm air ahead of the front, sharply cold the temperatures behind it and there's our next system already coming in on the Pacific jet here coming through uh, southwest Canada into Montana and the Dakotas. Now, what happens after that? Okay, here's November 15th. The European develops a much, much colder pattern here. I mean, a real cold stuff. So, 
um, you want to keep that in mind here. Uh, uh, this pattern turns sharply colder after the middle of the month. Look at this humongous ridge here on the west coast. This ridge goes all the way up into the Arctic regions. This is a cross polar flow ridge here pulling the cold air in. And look at this trough on the east coast. This is a cold positive PNA pattern of the deep trough on the east coast. Um, this is uh, much sharper. This is a really impressive cold air from November. Uh, the European Ensemble also supports it. You can see that. Now, the European Ensemble November 18th also still has some blocking here in southern Greenland, northeastern Canada. You can see that some sort of low pressure is there in uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, and that big, big ridge going from California to Alaska all the way into the western half of the Arctic regions, the Arctic Circle, pulling down the cold air. This is a cold looking map, folks, for the middle of November. Now, this is November 19th. The European Ensemble moves the trough to the East Coast. Is there a storm on the East Coast? Is it cold enough for snow? In the mountains, it might be. It very well could be. Not on the East Coast, but on the mountains, very well could be. Uh, the Canadian is showing the same sort of thing. Look at the Canadian here. This is the Canadian Valley, November 19th. And there's the European. There. That is the, the, that is the 12th. There is the, uh, there you go, November 19th on the European and there is the Canadian showing the same sort of thing if you ask me very much the same sort of thing again very strong ridge on the west coast all the way into Alaska and past the Arctic region now the GFS is not quite that it's cold as aggressive it's not bad it's a cold pattern and it shows a potential Midwest storm but it's not quite as cold when the eastern United States all right now the GFS extended does turn colder after the storm on November 21 now the ridge does look like the European this does look like the European from this so you can see now here on the GFS extent we have a nice big see the blue on the east coast there's your negative anomaly here and look at that ridge going from California to Alaska into the Arctic regions pulling on the cold air pretty darn impressive ridge that's some cold stuff the European weeklies this is Thanksgiving weekend uh oh look at the ridge on the west coast that is pulling down the cold air boys and girls i'm telling you that is impressive stuff for mid-november we have a block there clearly the model is indicating a block over northeast canada greenland and we have a neutrally tilted trough right in the over the mississippi valley that is a storm indicating a storm for somebody a thanksgiving weekend i'm just letting you know uh not thanksgiving it looks like the weekend but it could be we'll see so keep that in mind. It's just a general idea. We'll see if it happens. And then uh, this is the European Weekly. Now, this is December 10. I realize we're way out here, December 10. But look at the pattern doesn't change. A lot of nice blocking here in northern Canada. A moderate-sized trough in the Midwest here along the Mississippi River. A nice, strong ridge on the West Coast, i got to tell you. So the thing that I'm concerned about here is how this system coming up for the weekend is going to be very similar to what we saw January 24, 25. So this system here, let me go back to it. So you, what I'm talking about, this system could trend further to the west, and it could end up driving significant rain all far west as Raleigh or Greensboro or Richmond. I don't think D.C., maybe Patuxent River, Salisbury, maybe Atlantic City, New Jersey, Cape May, and maybe even Cape Cod, so we'll see. But that's what I'm concerned about, this shifting of the track of the system to the west. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.